Welcome to Sausage on a Fork, a podcast dedicated to the UK's longest-running children's drama programme, Grange Hill. My name's Neil, and in each episode, I'll interview a former cast member about their life before, during and after their time on the programme. The world of Grange Hill was saddened recently when we heard the news that Gwyneth Powell had passed away on the 8th of September, the same day as Queen Elizabeth II. Gwyneth played Mrs. Bridget the Midget McCluskey for 11 series from 1981 to 1991 and made the character a British television icon. Before Grange Hill, Gwyneth had been a member of the National Youth Theatre and also trained to be a teacher before taking up acting full-time, joining Connacht Repertory Theatre and later Bristol Old Vic. Gwyneth's early television appearances included The Guardians, Zed Cars, Emmerdale Farm, Dixon of Doc Green and Coronation Street. In 1980, Colin Kant offered her a part in a programme called Grange Hill. As it was a children's programme, she rang her brother to ask if his children knew anything about it. She was immediately told that she had to play the part of Mrs McCluskey, and a legend was born. During her time at Grange Hill, Mrs McCluskey showed herself to be a firm but fair headmistress, the kind of headmistress everybody wanted. Grange Hill fans have shared their favourite memories of Mrs McCluskey, most notably giving Cathy Hargreaves the cane, confronting Suzanne Ross when she came to school dressed as boy George, having to deal with Mr Bronson and delivering the line, frightened of rocking the boat, believe me, if it's what it takes to keep her here, I'll sink the blessed boat. This was in response to claims that she didn't want to sack an unmarried mother on the teaching staff in order to better her chances of promotion. This caring attitude was shown on a number of times, such as when Ronnie Bertels was arrested for shoplifting and comforting Mrs Maguire during Zamo's drug addiction. One of the most famous scenes in Grange Hill history is the disco during the end credits of Series 7. Mrs McCluskey takes to the dance floor with Scuffy McGuffy, just as True by Spandau Ballet starts to play. My own personal favourite moment was any time we saw the McCluskey eye roll. Nobody could roll their eyes quite like Bridget. After leaving Grange Hill, Gwyneth continued to act on both stage and screen, appearing in programmes such as A Touch of Frost, Peak Practice, Holby City and Echo Beach. She also travelled the world teaching drama students. Recently, she had played the part of Polly Davis, the mother of Greg Davis's character Dan in Man Down. One of her last television appearances was in an episode of Not Going Out, where her character uttered a very loud expletive, a far cry from the prim and proper Mrs McCluskey. When the news of Gwyneth passing away was announced, thousands of tributes were posted on social media, showing how much love and affection people had for her. This episode of Sausage on a Fork features interviews and messages from Gwyneth Powell's fellow cast members who have shared their memories of the nation's headmistress. I've been joined by Mark Baxter, who played Dwayne Orpington, four series with Gwyneth, series four, five, six, and seven. So, Mark, if you can just tell us, what are your your sort of your first memories of Gwyneth Powell? Well, when Gwyneth came into the show, obviously um, the headmasters before her had all been the stereotypical, you know, headmasters that you get with a plum in the voice, and everything yeah. would be very oh, yeah, 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 and. And what Gwyneth did was that she brought she brought the um, the authenticity of the time. You know how you yeah. how, how a real headmistress would have been at that time, and you can tell by the authenticity. Of, as I said, it was like every scene she'd be like carrying like some you know some papers or something yeah. you know yeah. and some folders, and they were just beautifully held. Uh, and and she was such a. a a wordsmith, you know, she she worked all the words and there were just gentle pauses that she used to give. So you in it before that, you know, some of the scenes that I've had before with 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 adults, not just in Grain Chill, but in um another show called The Headmaster and stuff like that. And and even then you'd sort of the dialogue was more sort of put out there rather than the thought behind it a lot of yeah. the time. So she would say something like, So what do you know, so what do you think? you should have done and then give you that pause to to actually you know oh maybe i should have done something rather than say what do you think you should have done anyway moving on 
it was that kind of thing. Yeah. I was, I was, it was lovely to watch someone like her uh-huh. and her, and her thought pattern towards the scene, if you, you, you know, and as a young actor, I used to watch all of the older, like the teachers and stuff, you uh-huh. know, and you, it was a beautiful blend when she first came into the show because you had her trying to change all of the dynamics and Mr. Yeah. Keating, obviously, who was very still, very much, put your hand out, boy. You're going to get five, you know, five lashes for me. That kind of thing. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so she was wonderful. And you had some scenes with her. Did you have any particular favourite times of working with her? I'm not, well, well to be honest with you, there was no really favourites because I enjoyed working, as I say, we didn't really get to to watch these, these you know, these adult yeah. actors when we were out on location, we only really got to watch them properly when we were in the studio Uh and, and to be in scenes with them, you're sort of immersed in your own character as Uh well, you know, and and you look to, I, I can remember more scenes that with other people in with Gwyneth than I can with myself because I used to sit there and watch the monitor with her, you know? Yeah. And um, so of course you've got the scene with, uh, after the fight in the, in the, the student room with Pogo and Gripper. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know, they both get taken in. And I was sitting there watching, and you, you're just watching her there and her eye movement between the two, where you, you can see the total disdain that she has yeah. for, for Gripper. <laughs> and, and the sorrow, you know, and the little, she feels quite sorry for for, for, Pete, for Pogo. Yeah. And it's just in that, it, it's, it's, it's the moments that she, that, that, that they, she had no dialogue that you could learn so much. Yeah. Um, from, you know, from from some someone that was as good as she was, really. Yeah. So you were never at the end of the McCluskey eye roll. You never got one of them. I don't think so. <laughs> not, no, not, not. Not prob- You know, in the show, maybe outside of the show. <laughs> it's okay. Have, but, but not actually. <laughs> yeah. Not. No, I didn't get the eye roll actually in the show. <laughs> I don't think. But but watched it many times, and it was. It's a bit like watching. I don't know, Dwayne Johnson with the eyebrow, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Or, or Elvis with the lip. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. it was that trademark of, oh, he, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. It's perfect. Perfect. Uh, um, what was Gwyneth like with you off camera? Amazing. Amazing. Um, because, again, we're going back to a time when never work with children and animals. Yeah. Yeah. So you're still, you're still within that sort of thought process. And a lot of the adult actors at the time, you know, looked at us as little ruffians and, you know, scallywags. And and to be honest, they probably weren't wrong. Um, <laughs> but there were a few of those act- actors that um, Brian Capron was another one. Uh-huh. Um, and Gwyneth, that literally would actually say to you, listen, if you say that slightly differently, if your intonation goes up or down here, uh-huh. it, it will give the whole thing a complete. And so... You, you learned, so she was such a giving actress. Yeah. Um, and it was, a, it was, you know, when you look forward, to, you look at your scripts, you look forward to those scenes. Yeah. Um, Gwyneth was very much in, in that mould. Uh-huh. Um, and I, I literally saw, the last time I saw Gwyneth was at, uh, I think it was 2018 when we, we did a, um, it was down in uh, the Royal Holloway and uh-huh. we did a fans event. And, and, you know, she could remember nearly everything. You know, she remembers your time you did and and that that again is another real incredible yeah. thing and she's just she as i said uh, probably you, the, you know on the on the social media i think the Gwyneth will go down as the heartbeat of Grange Hill. right yeah you know you've got you've got some fantastic you had some fantastic um, characters that people will always remember but the constant that Gwyneth gave it for the for the years that she was in it yeah you know she was the heartbeat there was no doubt about it she was what made the, you know that, that 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 link between authority and pupil, and she was that linkage there. You know, and, and yeah. you knew where you were with Winner. Fabulous. So finally, Mark, what would your you know your lasting memory of Gwyneth Powell be? Oh man, I mean, uh, you know, as I said before, um, we would well, Grange Hill would never have been the same without Gwyneth as Mrs. McCluskey. Yeah. Uh, it, you, you're looking at, and it's so easy to say because it's all very past that, you know, it's all very, well, yeah, of course not because, but when you look at some of the, the, the other head, headmasters, headmistresses, as I said before, mm-hmm. if you were to ask any 
fan of the show. Yeah. Yeah. What teacher? What teacher do you remember? There's there's two that all or three that always come straight to their minds, and it'll be Mr. Bronson. Yeah. Mr. Baxter, obviously. Yeah. yeah? And of course, Mrs. McCluskey. Uh-huh. Right. So they're probably three. And I know that there's others that, that you know from after my time, or whatever. But I think that she was there and she was at the helm with all of the incredible storylines, you know, with with the racism, um, the um, the drugs, you know, with Zamo and things like that. So she oversaw all of that. And so my, like I say, someone, um, I think it was Erkan that actually wrote it. You know how we'd lost our queen yeah. uh, and and that I thought that was probably the quote um, that will stay with me, you know, for forever really. Cause I think that that really was the nail on the head. It was yeah. exactly as it was. Definitely. Well, thanks Mark. Thank you so much for, for, <laughs> for coming on and giving us your thoughts on Gwyneth Powell. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Melissa. I played Jackie. Wright in Grange Hill, a.k.a. Zamo's girlfriend, uh, Robbie Wright's sister. And I first met Gwyneth back in 1984. I was a big fan of Grange Hill, so knew who she was. Um, Although my character, Jackie, didn't have many scenes with Mrs McCluskey as... um, Jackie didn't really get into trouble. It was more Zamo who got into trouble and Jackie would always support him. So I didn't have many scenes with Gwyneth. The The scenes that we did have with her, I just remember her being a really warm person. Um, she'd always smiling, always. She treated us like um, fellow artists, rather than um, children, really. Um, She actually treated us like actors. And um, I found her quite different to uh, her character, Mrs McCluskey. I found Gwyneth really warm and, and friendly. I remember when we left Grange Hill, we were in the sixth form, and Gwyneth bought us all presents, Um, really unexpected because no other um, actors, playing teachers had ever bought all the kids presents. She bought every single one of us who were leaving um, a gift and it was wrapped and she'd written um, a personal message to each and every one of us. wishing us luck uh, in our our journeys when we left Grange Hill because obviously it was a big part of our lives and it was a big part of her life as well. Um, She will be sadly missed, but I fondly um, remember watching her on Grange Hill when I was a little girl and... um, and continued to watch for many years um, until I was on it, really. <laughs> so she'll always have a, a really special place in my heart. I've now been joined by Ricky Simmons, who played Aunt Jones. Uh, and Ricky, uh, you were on uh, two series with Gwyneth, but obviously you'd grown up watching Gwyneth on, on Grange Hill, so... When you, what were your sort of your first memories or your first impressions of Gwyneth Powell or Mrs. McCluskey? Well, as you say, yeah, I, she was, um, when I joined, I think she'd already been on about four or five years. Uh-huh. So, so as well as kind of, you know, as everyone being so, such famous faces on that, she was quite this kind of formidable, you know, head of the school um, uh-huh. that was just so iconic even at the time, you know, forget about the fact that now we look back and she was in it for 10 years, but even at the time after only a few years, she was a really iconic character. So Uh when I started, um, I'd mentioned in a previous interview with you how intimidating it is where, you know, you've got all the most famous faces of these famous, famous kids in Britain, but 
you know, there's an extra layer of intimidation with uh-huh. the teachers because because their characters are, you know, um, inherently intimidating because they're teachers. Uh-huh. Um, and then you, as soon as I met them, um, I had a few scenes in my first couple of episodes with Gwyneth. Um, and so I was kind of nervous about meeting her, but she was amazing because she did this incredible thing of putting you so at ease, making you feel so comfortable. And, you know, the first thing that struck me as well from seeing this, you know, quite a formidable character, like firm but fair, but, you know, quite an authoritarian character on the TV. Um, the the contrast with her as a as a person was, you know, just this really warm, loving person. So that yeah. was quite a thing that struck me. Um, but then the interesting thing when I realized how good an actor she was, yeah. you obviously have this period where you meet, you do read throughs together. As I had like three or four scenes with her, spent quite a bit of time rehearsing with her before the you know week or two later that we filmed the first scenes. And then when we filmed those first scenes, um, I can't remember the exact scene, but it was something where my character had been a little bit out of line and she was laying down the law, you know, yeah. giving him a bit of a rollicking. And whereas we'd rehearsed that and I could see that, you know, she was going to be quite tough with me. She did this thing a lot of actors do where when the cameras are rolling, they give it an extra layer of intensity yeah. and just that little bit more. And it it didn't throw me, but it kind of, set me on the back foot a little bit because it kind of I kind of suddenly for it was the first time during that first two or three weeks after all these rehearsals uh-huh. that I kind of saw the whole McCluskey glare yeah and it was quite <laughs> it was it was a bit frightening and she was so good yeah um, but it was kind of good for the scene because even though it kind of threw me a little bit yeah. that was quite good because you know the, the character's supposed to be thrown by the headmistress like literally you know bollocking him really excuse my language um and so and then as soon as the scene finished then you know then then suddenly that little glint in her eye comes back that mischievous glint and it's Gwyneth again and it's kind of like oh that's all right and and breathe and um but yeah that that struck me I did think oh my god she's better than I thought I really thought that um and that's what really struck me the most about working with her You, you know it's obvious some some characters that are, you know are played by actors of course the actor is going to be different to the characters but you know she really kind of had this other level of performance which i just thought was hugely impressive yeah and so what was you mentioned there what what she was like on camera what was she like off camera well she was just so kind of like i said so different from uh, the mccluskey character who was a uh-huh. really kind of you know, a Thatcher-like character, yeah. you know, really kind of a strong 80s woman. Mm-hmm. And um, and I'm not saying Gwyneth wasn't strong, but she was just a very gentle, warm mm-hmm. presence. She was unbelievable. And the thing that I, I loved about her as well, which was great, because the way I kind of saw her, I didn't see any ego at all. Um, and as nice as a lot of the other actors, particularly some of the adult actors playing um, teachers, a lot, as much as they were all lovely, you know, there were one or two had a bit of a trace of ego. I'm not saying they were a pain, but you could see there was a little bit of ego sometimes. I never saw that with, with her. She was kind of, you know, for such an established character in this show Mm -hmm. and a seasoned pro, you know, with a lot of experience in loads of TV shows. Um, it was lovely to see someone who wasn't affected at all and was just a, just a sweetheart of a person. Yeah, brilliant. And you've, you've mentioned about the fact that you did have a few scenes with it. Is there any favourite scenes, anything in particular that you had? Yeah, I tell, I tell you what I do remember. Um, and again, my, my memory's pretty bad now, um, so I can't remember the exact nature of the scene, but there was a scene where in season nine um, where... And Jones is getting completely battered by Bronson, victimized, et cetera. And then he decides to run away. Um, and I think if I'm recalling this right, you, right. you'll probably be good at putting <laughs> me right if I've got okay. this wrong. But, I, but I'm pretty sure there's a scene where it's like in the stairwell of the school just before he decides to literally walk out of school. And then I think in yeah. uh, subsequent scenes, he's running away and he goes missing. And I'm pretty sure that there was a scene with, 
with I think it might have been Baxter and McCluskey right. when he walks out. I'm almost certain of it because I uh-huh. can just see her now. And if I've got that wrong, this is going to sound ridiculous because I'm just, you know, projecting the wrong person in the scene. But I'm sure it was her because she was kind of, again, giving this kind of intense performance where she was making me kind of um, do much better acting than I thought I'd be nice. capable of. She, You know, she was one of these actors that brought stuff out of you, which um, yeah. not every actor does. Some some of them are kind of in, um, I don't know, you know, in um, what's that term when you're in cruise control? Right. Uh, some of them are kind of like that, but she... She was brilliant. And um, I mean, there were some scenes as well I did with her where, you know, in that first year that I was in it, I was just getting kind of um, bullied by the teacher. And she was involved in a lot of those scenes. And so I was in her office a few times. Um, And I can't remember any specific scene in her office, but I just remember those scenes really loving them because it was an inherent drama if you're being called to the headmistress's office. Yeah. So it so it gave it added tension. Yeah. And it it meant it was a bit easier to kind of you know do that thing where you're like, yeah, crapping yourself because you've been called <laughs> to the headmistress's office again. And she and she was just brilliant. At it. She kind of just from this kind of really warm, kind, yeah. thoughtful person just turned on this kind of glare, and it was like, Ooh. yeah. Um, so yeah, I just remember those scenes just being like I'd said to you previously about scenes with um, an actor like Michael Shear or Bronson, same goes for her and uh, Michael who played Baxter doing work with those kind of actors and particularly Gwyneth. Um, it kind of just, you know, makes you up your game a little bit. So yeah. that's what I loved about it. I tell you what I do like about it. And this that didn't really kind of have anything to do with me because I was, I'd already left school. I was like 17 when I started, but a lot of the much younger child actors, what I noticed about Gwyneth, which was an incredible thing, um, you know, when these, when everyone's on the set and the cameras start rolling, because you're dealing with sometimes children as young as 11, 12, who, you know, are clearly not going to be the most professional actors in the world. So invariably you'd have kids like, messing about when the cameras start rolling, giggling, uh-huh. forgetting their lines, just generally being crap, you know, whatever it was. But you had some of the actors that played the teachers where you'd see them getting a little bit frustrated. Sometimes, occasionally, some would, you know, have a word, have a yeah. stern word, or be. you could see suddenly you'd feel tension with the adult actors when the kids were really not doing doing their job as they should. But I never, in the, all the time I was there, I never once saw Gwyneth lose her patience. Wow. Not one bit. Yeah. Um, and if she did underneath, she didn't show it. Not one iota, which I thought was really good. And she treated, I could see she treated like, you know, an 11-year-old in the same way as she'd be treating one of the other teachers yeah. in terms of acting. Like there was an equality that there wasn't a different kind of, yeah. excuse the pun, but class system, if you yeah. like. Um, so, you know, who knows whether she was like that in the years before, before I joined. Maybe, you know, maybe someone else would tell you that, you know, she'd snapped a couple of times and she kind of learned to kind of keep it in. But I don't think so. I, I didn't see it once. So I think that's kind of pretty admirable when you're yeah. working with a load of uncontrollable kids. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, all fair play to her for that. Yeah. And now, I just wanted to ask you, because I know when you listen to, her episode of the podcast, there was something that you hadn't realised about Gwyneth Powell before. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you explain what that was? I'll tell you what it was. So, yeah, that first of all, it was a brilliant interview. Um, you know, it was so good to hear her talking about all the old times. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, the thing that I didn't realise that came out of that interview was when she was talking about how when the first discussion started about bringing in this um drug storyline about Zamo being on heroin. What I didn't know was that she took it upon herself to go and speak to the producers, speak to the BBC and ensure that, you know, the, the actor playing this character that was going to be a really sensitive, challenging, controversial storyline. She wanted to make sure her first thought was making sure that the actor was all right. And he had a duty of care 
and protection. Yeah. Because it, I think she cited the example of Mark who had played Gripper, not necessarily being thrown by the walls to the BBC, but just didn't have not having that protection where he got, you know, understandably a lot of flack from the general public who mm-hmm. thought, oh, he he's like that. And she wanted to ensure that it was dealt with. A, I think she was talking about she wanted to make sure he was on interviews. And, mm-hmm. So this young audience for Grain Shell could see that, you know, he's not that character who's kind of suddenly been turned upside down by drugs. It's an actor playing the part. And I, and I just love the fact that she was almost insistent that they make sure they look after the actor. Yeah. Um, and that seemed to be above whatever the, um, you know, the substance and the quality of the storyline was going to be. Yeah, really I, impressive. I yeah. found that really moving. Yeah, definitely. And I was the same. Like, I, I was... I don't know if shocked is the, is the right way, but I just thought that's amazing for it to have gone out of her way to, to make sure that, that Lee was looked after and, and, and people realised that. He, Definitely. And, Lee, it, and it didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a major surprise because it's like, oh my God, yeah, because she's lovely. Yeah. Like you still don't expect someone, you know, see, there's a lot of people that just be kind of, you know, going along doing their job and not, you know, getting stuck into the ins and outs of a situation like that and the way she did. Yeah. That was incredible. Of her. Yeah. No, so, but... you know, incredible lady, incredible person, as well as an incredible actor, I think. Yeah. So what would your, like, your lasting memory of Gwyneth be? I think it's that, um, I mean, uh, you know, it doesn't escape any of us that were kind of reading about this the other day and hearing the news that, the extraordinary thing about the timing of it is that she died on the same day as Queen Elizabeth. Uh-huh. And so you can't help but thinking, whether it's stretching it a little bit or not, but thinking about these parallels where you got a head of a nation dying that everyone knew. But also, you know, I think there is a parallel there with a certain generation who, you know, the head of this, albeit fictional school, everyone knew her. and. It even makes me think, even though I'm talking about the fact that, you know, she was a very formidable character, the kind of strict, stern character. I think she also, as an actor, brought this slight kind of mischievous kind of glint as well within the character occasionally that, you know, and and I think, you know, some, some of the stuff that I've been reading online, a lot of the messages that I've read, there's this similar kind of, um, comment from a lot of people where a lot of people were saying oh mrs mccluskey the headmistress that i wish i had yeah. so you know there's two types of headmasters or headmistresses the ones that it's like oh my god i'm just terrified of that one but yeah. the fact that so many people are saying she's the headmistress i wish i had shows that she brought this kind of warmth uh, underneath the kind of tough exterior of the character and I feel like that's shone through and that's probably why people have, there's probably been this great outpouring of affection for her. Yeah. I think they kind of warmed to, to the character, even though they didn't know the actor behind was kind of bringing this humanity to them. Yeah. Well, but definitely. Well, Ricky, thank you so much for coming on. She'll be sorely missed by a lot of people and uh, condolences to her family. Take care. My name is Jonathan Lambeth and I played Danny Kendall in Grange Hill. I was fortunate enough to work with Gwyneth on Grange Hill for about four years. Uh, Aside from being an amazing actor and absolute professional, she was also brilliant, fun, thoughtful and kind and uh, always generous in terms of her time and consideration of others. Um, She was universally popular because she was so nice and such good company. Uh, But she was also deeply respected. Uh, If any one of us younger cast members ever got one of her quiet, that was good, really good, type comments after a scene, uh, you would take it home and treasure it. She had a tremendous career before and after Grange Hill, and plenty of adult actors did not engage with the younger cast to the degree Gwyneth did. She didn't have to be that person on the show. But that's who she was. I think she herself used the phrase, my kids, and we really felt that. Uh, Not that that gave us licence to mess around. I uh, do remember one time when a bunch of us were a bit feral during filming and the director that day had slightly lost control 
Uh, Gwyneth eventually frowned and said quite loudly, OK, everyone, I think it's time to get some work done now. Instant behaviour from everyone in the room. This was a rarity, of course. Most of the time it was quiet encouragement or constructive suggestions that helped us younger cast members and made scenes so much better. Uh, I think this combination of the off-screen self and brilliantly acted role meant Gwyneth and Mrs McCluskey in parallel became the much-loved heart of the show uh, and the cast for that era of Grange Hill. Something else I'm not sure all Grange Hill fans would realise, uh, but how talented she was outside of acting. Uh, she could have as easily written or directed episodes as acted in them. Uh, I remember more than one occasion when a particular big scene wasn't quite working in rehearsals. Uh, with a nod from the director, she would take the script home overnight and tweak it until it flowed and properly represented the different characters. Um, she knew Mrs McCluskey better than anyone, of course, and was fiercely protective of her, of her character. Uh, but she also looked after everyone else. Uh, along with her sense of fun and her brilliance, it's that warmth and kindness that stays with me most about Gwyneth. Uh, I know everyone who knew her will miss her deeply. I've now been joined by Alison Bettles, who played Faye Lucas, and Ruth Carraway, who played Helen Kelly. Alison, if you can just tell us your first memory of Gwyneth. Um, so my memories was just like um, how professional she was and how lovely she spoke. Uh -huh. um and just what just what a lovely lady she was just um kind caring and so professional yeah like yeah if i had to if i had to sum her up in three words it would be kind caring professional brilliant brilliant and obviously Ruth, you, you joined the show a little bit later and obviously mrs mccluskey was a, a much uh, more established character by then and obviously you would have grown up watching it so what was it like to join the show and then just suddenly to be working with Gwyneth Powell? Well, obviously, because you have this picture of a headmistress, that's what you've got in your head as a someone watching it from afar. Um, but, and I suppose I, I, we sort of saw her as that, I think because of uh -huh. what Alison said, she was professional, but not in a headmistress, you know, a real demonstrative <laughs> one, like yeah. a real sort of friendly, nice, um, yeah, because she was so professional and... Yeah, she was lovely. Really liked her. All of us, we just cannot believe it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, I mean, it's just devastating news, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I don't do any social media, as you know. And um, uh. someone sent me a message and it was just a picture of Gwyneth and the headline. And it was just like, mm. oh, my God. Yeah. And, and then I immediately sent it over to Lisa, actually, and said, Lisa, do you know? Because Lisa does do a little bit of social media, but she mm. didn't know either. Right. Um, I, I just, I just can't believe it. I was away actually at the time. I was on holiday with oh, my friends. Oh, it's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and I don't talk about Grain Jill at all. It's like you don't mention it. Like you don't uh -huh. ever say the word. Or, and I just like, I was with all the girls. There was nine of us, and it was like, oh my god, Mrs. McCluskey's died. Yeah. And and they know. Like if I'd have yeah. said when it, you know, they wouldn't have had a clue. But when I said Mrs. McCluskey, they was like, no way. Yeah, because yeah. I think it's not just us that have been in it, but everyone who's watched the programme is yeah. sort of, oh, the headmistress has died. Yeah. The, best, you know, the best headmistress in the whole wide world is, and the, the probably the most known. Has yeah, I mean, a really iconic character was yeah. she, Mrs That's McCluskey. And, and like, I, I know people who, who didn't really watch Green Jill, but they still knew who Mrs. Mrs. McCluskey, McCluskey was. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously, you, you know, you were both on the show for, you know, uh, quite some time, so you would have worked with her quite a bit. Do you have any sort of favourite scenes or favourite memories from working with her? OK, so I have got one, and this was when, because I have told you before, Neil, I am a giggler. I think I said right. that in the last podcast. I am a giggler. And we it was a scene where... I'd been, we'd been caught robbing and we had to go to the shop to, and I right. think she was driving, but in the car, sorry, they don't, we weren't actually driving, they weren't filming this. We had the car was on the back of a trailer right. and we had to pretend and I've got the giggles and I was just like, all of us, good so I'm sitting there and I'm meant to be looking, you know, naughty and, and she, she still maintained, she got a bit of the giggles too, but even right. she maintained the professionalism all the way through. And another scene with, um, 
it was Tina, so uh, Ronnie, Callie, and we had to be going into the headmistress offices and we, we just started giggling and beforehand and we, we was there all day and that's what she was so patient <laughs> yeah. because we were just naughty little kids and just getting the giggles and she was so patient because it took like so many takes because uh-huh. whenever we just like opened our gobs woo! yeah and we were just not as professional <laughs> so gig- lots of giggling yeah very patient very professional yeah and what was she like then sort of off camera oh just amazing yeah just just yeah. chatted with us you know didn't um yeah just I mean it was different because we had a green room so the the kids had their green room and uh-huh. the adults and when you become yeah. an adult you get your own dressing room so um but you'd, you'd sit maybe at dinner and have a chat with them or when you're on set waiting for uh-huh. there's a lot of waiting around on set yeah. so you do chat so yeah she just um just had conversations with us and yeah just treat treat treated us like adults even yeah. though we weren't behaving like bloody adults right. well, okay. for me. I just yeah. think for me even though we weren't behaving like adults she treated us like adults yeah. so mm. it was lovely and as you know from me I I don't actually remember any scenes <laughs> I'm sure I did do some with her but yeah. being that I wasn't a naughty girl anyway so unlike Ruth I never ended up in a in our office right. so I'm, you're probably going to go oh you did but I can't <laughs> remember so I don't think I would have ever had a scene as the naughty girl in her office so I don't think I would have had that but uh-huh. um I've done a few um charity things with her we did um children in need we yeah. did children in need <laughs> and um so off you know we we did our bit on 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 the children in need uh-huh. but then we'd be sat out the back me and me and Gwen if having a chat um, and we shared a room, like they, they gave us a room in a hotel. Um, I think it was an hotel. It was, it was in a room. <laughs> and um, we sort of went over there and got changed. And she's just the most loveliest, kindest person. Yeah. Um, and then most recently we did the ne- Never Mind the Buzzcocks together. Yeah. 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 And um, and that, I mean, it weren't that long ago. And then so while we're sitting in the green room, she's, we, you know, just a chat about what she's doing and when we were younger I never realized how amazing she was Mm -hmm. because we were kids and we were just off messing around yeah but now I've had like an adult conversation with her yeah um, and she was just so fit and well and looked brilliant Mm. looked amazing and it's just so um clever like she was off to Japan and Hong Kong teaching yeah teaches and I've just got just the utmost admiration for this clever, wonderful, professional yeah. woman. And I cannot tell you how shocked and gutted I am. So just to, just to sum up, what, what would your lasting memory be of Gwyneth? Uh, sadly, I never got to talk to Gwyneth as an adult, so I still have my child memories. But when I left, she gave me a book, and I've still got it to this day, and it's about uh, Fanny Kemble, and she was a actress in the 1800s. Um, an actress and writer and she gave me that and I've still got it to this day so um, that's the and just that I just love her just a smile just a kindness and a love so just I just do genuinely feel privileged to to have known her personally yeah Um, yeah okay then well thank you very much for joining us obviously I know we're it's not the best thing that we want to be talking about obviously but but thank you very much Thank you on. for doing this, thank, Neil. Yeah, this is you. lovely. This is really nice. Yeah. No, listen, honestly, th- thanks once again, girls. It's oh, uh, thank yeah. you. Thank you for doing yeah. this, Neil. Great to hear your memories. Cool. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you, Neil. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hi, Lisa East here, as was. I play Christine Everson, and I just want to say what an absolute wonderful woman Gwyneth was. Full of life, full of fun, um, a mother figure. A really, really special woman um, in the scenes that we done, especially the one where I had my hair cut and she came along the corridor and told me to take my turban off type thing. It was hilarious. I was so hard to try and keep a straight face when everybody else was laughing around me and she even had a little giggle on her face. Absolutely amazing. Um, somebody that I'll never forget. The last time I did see her, we had one of the loveliest hugs that you could ever have and I will treasure that forever. Um... There's no more I need to say except what an absolutely beautiful woman. Um, Yeah, that's it. Take care, everybody. Thank you. 
I've now been joined by Gary Hales, who played Nigel Flavin. So, Gary, if you can just tell us, you you must have grown up watching Gwyneth before you joined the show. So what was it like going from someone who saw her on the show to then meeting her? Gwyneth was, um, she was just a really friendly person in real life. Really funny. But if you're the new guy in one way or another, it can be quite, you know, nervy and uh-huh. intimidating. A great, great deal never was. And, and Gwyneth certainly was one of the people that was very friendly, very open, very welcoming. Yeah. Um, I, I loved her. Funny, I joined the show as an, as an adult, so I didn't have the chaperones and all that kind of stuff going on. So I, yeah. I, I, I kind of had a, a much more freer time at Grange Hill. Uh-huh. Um, and I, she just was always very open and friendly. Uh-huh. Uh, and I tweeted something in the week, which you may or may not have seen. Uh, the first day I, I went on EastEnders, by then Grange Hill had gone to Elstree. Right. He came and found me, and this is three or four years after Grange Hill, I guess, just to congratulate me and just to come and say hello and just, and it was, it was completely unnecessary, but completely typical of her. It was yeah. so nice. And she was so chuffed and it was almost as if you really were one of her students and she yeah. was kind of blowing up and she was kind of making sure you're okay and all that. And I used to see her around a lot while I was up there. And we would always chat and say hi and whatever have you. Um, and I have to say, I, when I read the news, I was genuinely gutted. I mean, really, really that lump in the back of the throat, just like complete surprise. And, and genuinely, I was just proper choked up. I couldn't, I, I just couldn't believe it. And I, I guess, you know, you don't want to believe it. And it's, it doesn't seem possible that she yeah. can't around in some way because she's such a legend and she'll always be around she'll always kind of be a part of our lives and always was a part of our lives Uh, and I'm just grateful uh, genuinely grateful that I got to just not only meet her but get to know her yeah you know and that she kind of I I genuinely think she cared about the pupils she really did she did care right Mm -hmm. now if if you saw her she would always ask about you everything Um, was about you Never about her, it was how you are, how, you know, all of that kind of stuff. What are you up to? Is good things good for you? She was so kind of like mothering in almost a, a corny kind of way. But you know what I mean? It's like that. Yeah. That, that people can be. And I, it, it seems silly to say she'll be missed because I didn't see her very often. But she will be missed because she was there. She was, yeah. you know. I, I, she will, you know, she, she's definitely missed. And, you know, I think of her. And for me, it's that, it's that day at Elstree when she came over and she made a point of coming to find me. That'll always give me that smile and that warm feeling. And, and yeah, it's just very, very sad. Uh, and I think testament to how much she was loved is, is probably the, the tweet I put up. I, I can't remember what it was now, but it was 800 odd likes, yeah. retweets and stuff like that. And, I never get that kind of, you know, that's, I, I was shocked, but that is a testament to how much she, she really yeah. was. I say a, a lot of people who, who I've spoken to and, and and I've read messages from just saying, as, as you said there, she was like your headmistress. And I know um, someone said in another interview that when you were, if you had a scene in her office, you genuinely felt like, you know, a, a naughty kid, like, and, and, and I, for the character that you had, uh, Nigel had, had a couple of them, didn't he? Yeah, I'm, I do you know, I don't really remember doing <laughs> talk about that when, when we spoke first of all. I, I remember my mom being with her. And I'm going to have to look back now and see and, and kind of, if I watch them, it'll come flying back, I'm sure. But the overwhelming memories of her for me um, are much more social, much more in North Acton when we were rehearsing or you know, in in the you know in, in the little area in the cafe bar before we were filming and stuff, and just generally, uh, and then much later when I was that little bit older, and I know it sounds ridiculous, but two or three years, you know, between eighteen and in your twenties is is quite different, and kind of seeing her on a regular basis up at Elstree, you know, it, those are the memories that that kind of stick with me. Uh, and as I say, that particular one that I mentioned, because. She, that and she really made the point. She had the biggest smile on her face. She was so yeah. 
so kind of pleased for me and, and it was genuine yeah. uh, and I just that I'll never forget that absolutely never ever forget that Brilliant. well Gary it, 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 it's obvious how much love you've got for it and that that that, that moment's obviously meant an awful lot to you as well so thank you for sharing that and, and thank you for coming and talking about it as usual, you know, it's a pleasure, mate. It really is. I worked with Gwyneth when I was playing Laura Regan in Grange Hill from 1985 to 88. Um, and I was really nervous about meeting her because I'd been watching the show. <clears throat> so she was the ultimate headmistress. Um, but she was so lovely. She was quite quiet, um, totally professional and so patient with all of us. Um, I can imagine we were a nightmare, but you wouldn't have known it. If she looked at any of us, she just had this really lovely, gentle, genuine smile um, across her face. And um, it was just lovely to work with her and so honored to have done so. So she is very sadly missed. I have now been joined by Karen Ford, who played at Miss Ginny Booth. Can I, can I just ask what your first memories or your first impressions of working with Gwyneth were? Gwyneth was always serene. She was always calm. Uh, she was very welcoming to me as a newcomer to the series when uh, I started in Series 8. She was totally un unflappable. I just say, serene. She was, I mean, in many ways, I was sort of thinking about it um, the other day and we used to laugh saying that uh, if any of us had to actually do the thing we were supposed to teach most of us would be useless I can't paint or right. draw anything. but in an odd sort of way the one person who really could have been a headmistress was Gwyneth definitely <laughs> in many ways she was our headmistress uh -huh. she um, she was the leader of the whole cast in many right. ways of us adults and uh she was just a joy to work with she really was yeah because obviously you you left at the same time didn't we you did. was that a conscious decision can i ask uh no <laughs> right. no yeah. i mean we hadn't colluded or anything no no it was just time for both of us to move on really yeah and <laughs> do you have any sort of you know favorite or memorable scenes or anything where you work together I, I, to be honest, I can't uh, remember anything in particular. I mean, Gwyneth became a very good friend. Yeah. Uh, and I suppose some of the thoughts I have about her really are, are, are more to do with um, that friendship uh -huh. than the work we did together. Uh, just about the time when, I mean, one of the reasons why I left the series, I guess, uh, I adopted a baby from Romania. Uh -huh. And Gwyneth was just wonderful and very supportive because it was a very difficult time and uh, she um, gave me a book for the, the baby about Queen Marie of Romania and after we finished the series I used to go down and visit her uh, in Sussex with my little son. She had, I mean her house was beautiful, it was very picturesque, it was an old cottage and she had the most beautiful garden. Gwyneth was yeah. a very great gardener and uh, a real dog lover and of course so am I um, and I'll never forget her garden it was just beautiful and she had uh, in the middle of the garden a little statue of sort of bust of the head of Shakespeare right. and um, I've got a photograph of my little son who I think was two by that stage um, sort of patting the head of Shakespeare uh, and just, I just remember going for lovely walks with her and down in Sussex. Yeah, she was uh, a treasure. Absolutely. Yeah, she really, really was. What would your lasting memory be of Gwyneth then? I think more than anything, her eyes. Right. She had the most incredible blue eyes. <laughs> and uh, she had, um, a, a, I don't know, amazing way of, of looking at you where. How do, you, how do you explain it? I don't know that she was looking at you and no one else and she was taking you, you in, but those eyes were amazing. She always looked beautifully dressed and very neat and tidy. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, she was just lovely. Well, thank you for coming on. I know it's a sad time because I know, I know you were great friends. 
uh, yeah. f- for a long time. So thank you so much for coming on and, and giving us your thoughts about Gwyneth. Thank no, you. Well, thank you for asking me, Neil. Thank um, you. And I wish all her family well. And it's a hard time for them, I know. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is George Wilson. I played Ziggy and Grangel uh, for four years. Uh, I just want to talk about a few things about Gwyneth, uh, Gwyneth Powell. Well, when we done Grangel, to be honest, I didn't really, although I've done a lot of scenes with her, I didn't really get to know her as a person. Do you know, it was weird. All the kids kind of stuck together and the adults stuck together. It was just the way it was. You know, you didn't really get to know anybody, the adults, really personally, although you'd interact. A little bit like I read about in the film Planet of the Apes. Apparently all the gorillas ate together in the breaks and the orangutans and the monkeys. They all, it was a little bit like that, you know, in, in a strange way. You just sort of stick. We just stuck together, all the kids mainly. And it's a shame, but I'm just glad that many, many years later, I got to do Celebrity Pointless. I think it was about three years ago, four max. And she was my partner on this Celebrity Pointless. And we obviously met before it and we had a good chat and caught up with each other, what we were doing over the last sort of 30 odd years, really, with our lives, uh, telling about my family my passions, where I've worked. She was telling me the same. And we went on Celebrity Pointless together and we won, which was, uh, if I didn't have Gwyneth, believe me, I wouldn't have won that. Uh, Because, you know, she was very intelligent. She knew a lot about a lot of things. And uh, I think she answered at least 90% of the questions that we got. Uh, I think I got a couple, you know. So that was great that we got to the final and uh, took a trophy home with us and we got, I donated some money to a local children's hospital here called Alder Hay and Gwyneth done hers to a, it was a school in Yemen or somewhere like that, some foreign country, like a school that was underprivileged because she was really into that. Now we, we exchanged numbers after Pointless, so that was a godsend so for the last three years until, you know, sadly her passing away, we we WhatsApped each other pictures and messages. She loved doing the voice messages like me. We'd chat and every now and then we'd ring and have a catch up, you know, at Christmas and things. So I'm just so glad that we did get a chance to rekindle uh, a friendship that, that we never had before, you know. And I got to know about her life, that she'd done so much, uh, which she never shouted from the rooftops about, for charities all over the world, for underprivileged children, for animals. She rescued a lion cub, helped rescue a lion cub. I mean, he wasn't in her back garden, but she certainly she went over to the country to see it a few times in South Africa. She was so involved in so many things that not many people would know about. Because, as I say, she didn't shout it from the rooftops. she just done it because she wanted to do it. It was a passion and to help people, children and animals. So, yeah, I take that from her. You know, I'm just glad I know all this. And some of the people who are going to listen to this will know that now. She's a really nice woman, very generous in so many ways. And as I say, I'm just so glad I uh, I got to know her again. And when she passed... You know, it was the same day as the Queen, but to me and all the certainly all the rest of the cast, she she was our Queen. You know, she was the Queen of Grain Jill. It's as simple as that, and a beautiful lady with it. Cheers for listening. Now I've been joined by Flair Taylor, who played Imelda Davis. And Flair, what were your sort of first memories of Gwyneth Powell? So from watching as a as a viewer, watching Grain Jill, probably yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think she's one of, I think to a good teacher has that, that calm authority, uh-huh. don't they? And, and she just had that in yeah. bundles. Um, so I think she was a very, very believable headmistress, uh-huh. um, as Mrs. McCluskey. And then I, th- I don't know, meeting her, cause I would have been, 
I think I was 14, 13 or 14, 14, I think I was nice. when I actually met her. And, you know, so I was quite a young child, really, at 14. You know, at 14, you think you're so grown up, don't you? But, yeah. And I think I, you know, it, it, she probably had that same sense. She wasn't intimidating. She wasn't, I didn't find her sort of scary and intimidating. Yeah. But just one of those people that just gains your respect and they just have that. And I, I, I don't know if they know that they have that and if they yeah. mean to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think she was very much like that. You just you just were slightly in awe of her, but in yeah. a nice way. Um, and she was just great at the role, wasn't she? I mean, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. She was yeah, made for that role, I would say. Definitely. She played it so well. Yeah, I mean, um, a lot a lot of the things I've I've read online with people just saying, you know she was a headmistress you know like that and that was the thing and, and the stories of people who have when they said they were out and about and they'd see her and they couldn't quite place her and assumed that she was a, a teacher from their school right and it was only yeah. sort of later on when they, they realized who it was yeah um, amazing no and i think i think i read that she trained to be a teacher she too. was yeah she trained yeah. to be a teacher initially yeah that's yeah. quite interesting i didn't know that yeah previously. um now, obviously, your character, Imelda, being the character she was, it would have had quite a few scenes with Mrs. McCluskey. Do you have any any particular favourite scenes? Um, there was one when the three Terror Hawks were called into her office. Right. I, I think I think it was to do with the the frog in the crisp packet. <laughs> right. Okay. I think <laughs> that's why we were called in, and I I just remember that being really good fun because it was me um Ruth and Sam just all lined up in front of her desk um you know and, and just quite a real not that I don't think I ever got called to the headmistress's office when I was at school but um but you could really imagine that being a thing they're all called in and we were standing there and um yeah just a really just a great scene and then of course Imelda's final scene when when she got turfed out Mrs. McCluskey coming into the classroom. I think I think I was meant to go and see Mrs. McCluskey, but wouldn't move off the floor of the classroom. So Mrs. Yeah. McCluskey had to come to me, um, or to Imelda rather. Um, so yeah, that was and and again, just that calm authority that that she acted that scene with. Yeah, she does no shouting or anything, is no, that never needed to shout, you, just you, calm. You knew your place, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. So finally, what would your what would you say your lasting memory of Gwyneth Powell would be? Gosh, I mean, I didn't. Unfortunately, I think because I was young and we didn't mix with the adult actors a huge uh -huh. amount. I didn't know her that well, and I think because I left when I was still quite young, uh -huh. I probably didn't. I think I think some of the others like Ruth and George that grew up a bit more during their time on the show and probably then interacted more with the adults as they yeah. got a bit older. And unfortunately I missed out on that, which is a real shame because I know, you know, they were great people and, and we did learn a lot from them, but um, yeah. So I just, she was lovely. I mean, she was absolutely lovely and hats off, you know, working with all those kids can't have been yeah. easy. And I'm sure we were really annoying at times. Yeah. But she would have never shown that. And she just just had this, definitely had an aura about her. Definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, Flair, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And, and, and giving us your thoughts on Gwyneth. And, and she will be missed. So, oh, gosh. It's, it's the end of a chapter, isn't it? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Neil. Thank you. Hi, hello, this is Nick Pandolfi. I played Matthew Cartwright. Uh, Gwyneth Powell was one of those people um, who, as an actor, and they're not all the same, she she was one of the special ones because when you join an established cast, as I and loads of people did afterwards, uh, with a show like Grange Hill, you, you need people to, A, be welcoming, but also show you around. And she was that. But she was so much more. She was more than just a welcoming face and, you know, hello, how are you? Um, welcome to the show. It was more than that. She she was just a really sassy person. Um, I, I've told the story a few times that there were a couple of us that we'd been filming really late one night. I don't know why. Normally we finish earlier in the evening, but there were some problems we'd finished late. And she said, 
I'm going to get some food. I'm going to get a drink, um, soft drinks for you. But would you like to join me in the BBC club? And this was a, an establishment that, you know, you, that you'd heard of. Um, we'd walked past, I'd walked past it within television centre. Um, and certainly I wasn't old enough to be going in. Um, but Gwyneth said, no, 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 you come with me. It's fine. You come with me. You you and a couple of others are, are guests. And she got us in and, uh, sort of one of the, I think they, in those days, they didn't call them security guards. I think they called them commissionaires. Um, sort of, you know, looked at me and sort of said, whoa, 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 too young, too young. And she just had this amazing, she just turned it from being the lovely, the lovely Gwyneth into that Mrs. McCluskey stare, as if to say, don't mess with me. Gwyneth Powell, an absolute star, and so much more than just Mrs. McCluskey. I've been joined by Erkan Mustafa, who played Ball and Browning. Erkan, if you can just... Tell us what it was like working with Gwyneth. I mean, to be honest, you know, looking back and ever since her passing, I have thought about her quite quite a bit. Uh, and the times that I was very lucky enough to work for, for so long. But my first impressions was when I was watching Granger that she was quite a strict he- headmistress. And just going from primary school to secondary school, I thought, gosh, she's quite strict. I hope that's not going to happen in my real school. And I had a male teacher and he was like a 1940s drill sergeant, so nothing like Mrs. McCluskey at all. Uh-huh. Um, and I remember, th- especially the first series that I did, and I'm sure I spoke to, uh, on, the, on the initial podcast uh, about Gwyneth, and I, I, did some, I did some amazing scenes with her, and she was really kind and really lovely. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, did I discuss this in a podcast? So I remember that Grange Hill won Saturday Swap Shop uh, and Eric on the yeah. And I was lucky enough to be invited um, to go and collect that on behalf of the rest of the cast and right. the crew. And and I was with Gwyneth this evening. So my parents, you know, um, didn't think it was appropriate for a ten year old boy, eleven year old boy, I should say. I think it was eleven or twelve to be wearing a, a, a dinner jacket. Um, so I wore a white shirt and a, a black bow tie. I think. And I remember giving, you know, I'd like, just like to thank all the viewers of Saturday Swap Shop. You know how they do it. Yeah. And then Gwyneth just over overcome across me and she said, and I'd like to thank the the directors and the producers of the show. And she's, she just stepped in like a headmistress. And it was just, <laughs> I just thought about that funny, funny moment. It's like a, a child was rambling and she just cut me off. And I just thought that was a... And I was thinking about this the other day, and I've never seen it since that. And I'd like to watch that again just to get that memories. But you know, I feel privileged to have have done so many scenes with her. Um, and I, I always think that she had a soft spot as the headmistress for Roland. When in my eyes, she did. <laughs> uh, she always had a she always had a soft spot. And I've been very, very fortunate and very lucky over the years to to know the lady and she's got to know me as an adult and I think I've, I spoke before that I was very lucky to spend a weekend with the late Terry Super, mm-hmm. Lee McDonald and Gwyneth and Karen Ford over a weekend at a convention uh-huh. and I really did get to spend a lot of time with her that weekend and we, we you know it was just like we'd just come off set and we were just talking but it was I was an adult and yeah you know, and it was nice to have this great conversation. And I've been very privileged over the years to, to, to spend time with her. Um, and as I said before, even last year, um, we did, I think, the Never Mind the Buzzcocks Christmas special. And it was just Alison and Lisa and I, and we was in in the studios, and we was talking, we was having lunch, and then out of nowhere came Gwyneth. I was like... <laughs> We, we didn't know you was doing this. And she went to be on uh, Ken. She said, I didn't really know. I said, well, what, do, what do you mean? She went, to be honest, I was sitting at home. I was having a bowl of soup, listening to Radio 4. And she goes, I, I just got a phone call from Greg, uh, the, the presenter of that show. And he said, because obviously she did, um, is it Man Down with him? Yeah. yeah. And she played, played his mum. She said, he just rang me up. I said, look, what are you doing this afternoon on this evening? She went, no, I've got nothing planned. He said, oh, I'm sending you a car. Um, you're going to be doing buzzcocks tonight. Um, I'll see you later. <laughs> so he always called her mum, yeah. she told me. It was just amazing. And I know that was the last time that I spoke to her. Um, and ever since her passing, you know, I, I, I thought about her quite a lot. And 
And what an amazing person she was. Um, you know, she was an, you know, an adult actress working with so many young, young people. And you know what? She never once treated any of us like children and none of us like kids. Um, we were all young actors and she was very proud of the fact that we were all very professionals. And I, I cannot ever remember a time where she was snappy or anything like that. She was just one of the most kindest, warmest people that I've had the pleasure to, to work alongside, to be honest, um, in any, any, any role that I've ever had in my professional as an actor or where I've ever I've done since. She was just an amazing woman. And when she did pass away, I told my wife, and obviously, she, you know, and my, my wife said to me, you know what? She was lovely. She was always kind to me. And I think that's, that's how Gwyneth was. She was always, yeah. always kind and al always lovely. And she's going to be missed by not just her family and her close friends, but absolutely everybody she's ever worked with, I believe, because... I've never heard a bad word about her, to yeah. be honest, and and that's and that, that's everlasting to whatever she she's done in this her career and her as a person. And you know, she was she flew up until COVID. She was still flying around the world teaching yeah. and and exam. You know, she was she was an examiner for for for, for RADA and things like this. And I just thought, good on her. You know, 69, 68 years of age and still flying around the world and. Yeah, I'm. I'm just very touched and very privileged to to have known for, for such a huge part of my life. And you know what? She's probably looking down at us, Grangeville, especially the fans of Grangeville, and have a little chuckle that she's always going to be called Bridget and Midget. Yeah. And I think that, that's, that's quite funny. And, that, yeah. and to be honest, she wasn't a small woman either, so that's a bit weird. <laughs> You, you've spoke there with, with with such affection for her. Do you have any particular favourite memorable scenes from Grange Hill that you did with her? You know what? Every, everything I ever did in in series one, really. Uh, you know, I I was up there with my Grange Hill parents, and everything we I have ever did with with the three of us, uh, my one of my parents or her, and it was just she all. Oh, yeah, it was just always lovely to do, to do a scene, and I was very lucky. I'm, you know, I think there wasn't an episode in my first year that I hadn't got a scene with her. Yeah, in, at least in every <laughs> every episode, I believe she was either having a little chat with him or whatever. And yeah, it was just, I just think, yeah, I can only say that the whole of that first year I was very very lucky to, to do a lot. I mean, every episode, I, I mean, I probably, yeah, probably every episode I probably did a scene with her. And there's not many Granger actors could say that in every scene in the first year. She, they've worked with plenty, of, you know. But I just yeah. think every when I look back on stuff, and I, I will one day sit back and watch that first year again, especially when my son gets a bit older, and, and take that all in again. Because, you know, obviously it's so many years later, and I just... But I still remember that everything I did with her was just was just nice. It was just yeah. it was easy. And, yeah. You know, it wasn't work, and not once. You know, did, did I ever feel like, you know, Gwyneth when she when she flicked into Bridget, when she, whenever she flicked into Mrs. McCluskey, you you just felt the power of her words, yeah. and I think that came, that came across to everybody who was a viewer that she had this softness. But God, she she was probably a really hard. Actress. Yeah, yeah, and and I know. Uh, you, you've talked about your own head teacher. What the thing that I liked when you when you posted on social media was the best headmistress you ever had. Yeah, and 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 I just thought, you know what? There's there's not many people that are able to say that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and for me, I mean, I'm an older generation, and you know, I grew up with black and white films and St. Trinians and yeah teachers and stuff that was on those TV shows and you know the Joyce Grenvilles of this of this world yeah. and stuff. But when you look at a, a TV headmistress or a headmaster, she was the nicest, kindest headmistress that a school could ever wish for, but yet she was the most diplomatic to both students and her 
her teachers. Yeah. And uh, I think that came across. And, yeah, she was, you know, social media, I, I don't really do much about Grain Chill on social media. But every now and again, you've got to give thanks. Yeah. And that's when I have, I mean, that's my everlasting picture of her. And it's, it was such a wonderful July evening and we were doing a Christmas show, um, which was really weird. <laughs> and yeah, that picture was, was just came to my mind that day. And I thought, you know what, I'd like to share it. Cause I don't really share, you know, many personal images of, of Grain Chill cast uh, without their permission. But I just think that needed to be out there and just so other people could could have seen her and my last time with her. And yeah, she was the greatest headmistress. Yeah, definitely. And so what would your lasting memory of Gwyneth be? My lasting just an amazing, warm, caring lady who came across she came across as she was really in yeah. real life. You know, she probably could have a really hard, you know, hard side who couldn't, but I was, I never saw it. I've never heard her say a swear word. I've never, you know, she was just a pure, loving, warm uh, lady. Yeah. Uh, and, I, you know, if I find somebody's ever said a, a, a bad word about her, then it must, they must be drinking because I don't, <laughs> I don't think that they can say a bad word about her, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, she's, she's going to be missed. Not, you know, as I said before, she's going to be missed by not just her family and her friends, but just absolute, all the Grange Hill fans who, you know, who, who have been very lucky to meet her at Grange Hill events, yeah. you know. Um, and they've all said exactly the same, what an amazing lady she was. Um, she's one of the good ones, yeah. you know. You know, even today's show, people say, you know, it's. But for me, I, you know me from my, my I, I say it how it is, and um, yeah, yeah, she, she was a good one, and uh, I'm very grateful that I've had that opportunity to have her in my life at such an early age, and I've been very and extremely lucky to reconnect with her in later life, and you know, she's going to be missed. She really, really will be missed. Yeah, but well, Eric, and thank you so much for coming on. And giving you those your your experiences with Gwyneth, so thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Thank you. Further messages from her fellow cast members include Paul McCarthy, who played Tommy Watson, who said she was a very lovely actor, generous with support for the kids. While Simone Nylander, who played Janet Sinclair, has said she was always a very focused and professional actor. I would like to thank everyone who has contributed to this episode and send all of our love and thoughts to Gwyneth's family and friends at this sad time. I would also like to thank Gwyneth Powell for all the memories, and I will leave you with these words from the great lady herself. It's just so lucky to have had a job like that uh-huh. for any actor. Yeah. That down the line, 20 years later, people still remembering the series and yeah. your contribution to it it's an honor really a thrill it was a real treat and a real privilege I think um and who knew you know when my nieces and nephews uh, (laughs) persuaded me that it was the best thing going yeah uh, they were right I've loved it